Hello friends and enemies, it's me Isabel here with your Romance Landia Monthly for October and mid-November. Holiday time is here, so that means the timing of these videos are going to be a little dicier depending on what is going on in the world because things shift. It's a... Uh, it was a wild month kinda. More happened than I thought. I honestly was about to delay this video and then just enough happened that I was like, now nah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come through here and talk about everything. So first up, I'm gonna do a TikTok speed run of all the weird things that have happened on TikTok in like the last three weeks. First up, we have to talk about my favorite. I'll put a photo up of uh, his takeover video. Knock off Jason Momoa, as we called him on Book Talk, uh, came in and said that he was going to take over Book Talk. Uh, he had no bookish content, more than welcome to join the community, but beyond a subjectively pretty face, we'll call it, no signs that he actually reads or likes books or anything of that of that nature. And he, his name, his username has a slur in it, so that's great. Um, and then he started attacking low, well-read nurse on BookTok, who is a black woman, uh, and other creators as well and just like turning them into the aggressor and claiming they've been bullying him for months it was a very weird experience but it was absolutely delightful to watch so many people come together and be like absolutely not with him so he got banned so that was that was good you know um and i think it was one of those ones where it's very funny to see someone people think that like book talk is like some lucrative business uh, and I'm not saying people don't make money doing bookish content because we do like we some people do make an income Do most people make a livable income is the real question on book talk And I'm not talking about like also having a business where you run people's socials and things I'm talking about just from your content alone making a livable income only talking about books That's a few and far between one y'all. That's a few and far between And that's a reality check. I think some people need but anyways this was just absolutely hilarious in my opinion and I had a blast watching everyone. Then there was a creator who was like, these are the spiciest books I've ever read. And it was all Colleen Hoover. So some people were very mean and I just want to note, like, as a statement, like, don't treat people online differently than how you would treat them in person. I wouldn't like laugh in someone's face in person if they told me Colleen Hoover was the spiciest books they've read. I'd be like, oh, what did you like about the spice? I can wreck you some other books, you know? So there's that, like, I don't know. It was really weird. People were very mean to her and I was very uncomfortable with this because again, we all have different spice levels. Um, yeah, you have to find your people, right? And know who reads books like you do to know what they mean when they say this book was spicy. We had the delight of the literary creator who got stitched to death for engagement going off that people refuse to read the classics. I continue to be astounded by the amount of people who get mad at other people for reading romance books and saying that they refuse to read the classics or that you know you're just not smart enough for the classics or whatever I guess I just like this whole thing was wild to witness because I feel like at the end of the day what it really felt like was I just want engagement so I'm going to take this take that I have and put it on the internet and see how many people stitch me and engage with my content because why not, right? Like I can get a bunch of stitches and engagement for it and she repeated that process like three times in a matter of a few weeks. So if you see her, just scroll on by y'all. Don't engage. It is not worth it. Um, she like backpedaled all. It was just very weird. But yeah, she, she claims that like, you know, you're not doing real reading I guess if you don't also read classics but you know I think uh we as a whole need to understand that everyone's reading just like tv and movies and everything else gets to be different and reading is a more immersive escapist experience than tv or movies often are because the the parts of your brain that it's like engaging are different so like just let people live their life and read what they want to read you know then we're gonna quickly touch on something that I think is just wild personally and not like huge news but like it's been covered. Uh, I just want to mention that Colleen Hoover sold more copies in the Bible which like I love that <laughs> I love that but I also hate it. I do think one thing to keep in mind with Colleen Hoover's popularity as someone who does not like her books and has read her books uh, I think there is an accessibility to her writing 
not only are they everywhere but also if you're someone who hasn't read in a long time i think her books are so emotionally roller coastery uh and what i deem emotionally manipulative um you know you can you can like colleen hoover i'm not gonna judge you i just i have no interest but she you know takes her readers on such an emotional ride with this emotional manipulation situation she has going on that she is then able to like pull you through a whole story if you haven't read a book in a while and you read a book like that that just like really goes for it like emotionally and like takes you on this roller coaster you're gonna buy more of those books my one hope with this is that it brings more people into the romance community that like are really interested in reading and finding some really amazing romances that's that's what i'm hoping comes out of this uh massive windfall for colleen hoover so there's that uh, i also feel like that's pertinent to mention before we get into the next discussion and here's one key point before we start this one some of y'all are not gonna like what i have to say um and that's fine we're not gonna fight in the comments about this topic I don't care what you do for yourself in your life. We don't need to discuss that down there. Um, we don't need to discuss alternatives down there. Like, please, like, let's just keep this, like, the, the discussion that I want to have about this topic, we'll, I will tell you. Um, so let's just try and keep it calm, please. Because I think this conversation has a lot more points and nuance than we can get across on the internet and need to be facilitated in a different fashion. It's also... I feel like 10 different conversations uh, that are getting smashed into one conversation and I don't think that's productive for anyone. So yes, we are talking about Z Library. I'm gonna play the video for you. This is the TikTok that went viral. My note here, do not go to that creator and comment on their page and be mean to them, anything like that. But I'm gonna play the video because I do have it. that's done it is the the sound used just like gives me cringes because i don't i don't like the it's like a visco girl i guess whatever i don't like it. it it makes me uncomfortable so this tiktok went viral showing this person downloading a colleen hoover book and within like 24 hours the site z library was down now a lot of people do use the library for academic work so we're going to take that element out of the conversation because we all know textbooks academic works things like that are over freaking priced and it is ridiculous the handle on the market that certain textbook companies have and how much they are able to charge for like a book and then for e-access and all these random things that literally will cost you a thousand dollars for one freaking semester of school sometimes so we're not gonna you get what I'm saying? Like, that's that's a whole side conversation. Like, that's one part of this conversation. The next part of this conversation, I personally don't like talking about piracy online because I think, again, there's so many elements to this conversation. And most often, the conversation focuses on the global north and does not include the global south and other places and also becomes very U.S. centric. And I think it's important we remember that where we live in the U.S., most of us have different access abilities and people in other places for a lot of reasons. And we don't even have like the best internet access in the world, y'all, but we still have more access than most people. So I think that's like something we need to think about in this conversation and the way we have it and how we are framing it to people, etc. I'm not planning to talk in depth about that conversation, but there are two things that have come up in that conversation that I think we do need to discuss. One, I don't think the answer is telling people to go to get to the library because I just don't think some of the people directing others to go use the library have been in a library in the last year and a half. Uh, our friends with people who work in libraries who understand uh, the challenges that libraries are currently facing between the doxing of librarians for disagreeing with book bans, the book bans being put in place of books that just can't even be in the library. And if they are, a librarian's getting arrested for it or, you know, they're getting protested for having a story time. It's just, it is absolutely wild what libraries are going through right now. And if you, depending on where you live, a library may not be that accessible to you. You may live in an area that doesn't even have a state-funded library. That looks like, that exists. Like, that's a thing, y'all. There are places that don't have state-funded libraries. 
so just like know that and like yes you can do interlibrary loans but like some books are unavailable for the second point which is what I think should be the key takeaway from this entire thing of what needs to change and what we should be helping reader as readers authors do and hopefully make better for uh but yeah so like you know you can't always get things because they're exclusive to Amazon 99% of the time is the problem so also keep that in mind because that is a huge thing right I just think that that conversation again I think this is there's there's 10 conversations happening at once I'm not joking like there's like 10 plus conversations happening at once so yeah just know that like libraries are a solution but they're not the only solution to this problem and there's a lot of resources to help you save money on books that are legal and free so if you want that I do have a video on that about how to save money on books um I do need to do an updated one because the Brooklyn Public Library is no longer an option but um I'm working on some alternatives currently so yeah there's that <laughs> On that note, the thing that I think is the key conversation that we need to take away from this with the Z Library takedown, which again, people are blaming on Colleen Hoover. I do think it was probably already in progress. I don't think Colleen Hoover has that much power. Like that feels like a little too conspiracy theory for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll, we'll say that. So what do I, like, what is my key takeaway here? The key takeaway I personally have is that Amazon takes full advantage of authors and it is absolutely atrocious so I love KU we a lot of us romance readers I love Kindle Unlimited it helps me read so many books otherwise I may not because I can't afford to buy every single book I want to read for 99 cents right from indies so we're specifically talking about indie authors here also on the conversation with Amazon so I love Kindle Unlimited it's it's an amazing service but here's the thing I think the exclusivity clause in Kindle Unlimited for Kindle Unlimited authors that only seems to apply to indie authors you know many traditionally published books are available in both uh, and the way Amazon basically makes it impossible to talk to a human when your book gets picked up on a piracy website or a pirating link thing because they have search engines like they have a thing that like trolls for your book right to make sure you're exclusive. The way that they do that and then you are unable to reach Amazon, like they literally took Ruby Dixon down y'all at one point. Freaking Ruby Dixon. And she got lucky because from back in the day when they used to have human contact points, like a rep to talk to when they were on KU, she still had that person because it's freaking Ruby Dixon, right? And was able to get it fixed pretty quickly. But your normal average indie author isn't going to have that resource and it's absolute bullshit in my opinion that they have to jump through so many hoops to prove that their book was not stolen and instead was illegally uploaded on a pirate website and that they didn't do it themselves. I feel like Amazon could put some clauses in there to prevent this issue because it is again absolutely ridiculous to me that they are able to basically hold their entire income in their hands right? and say no fuck you we're keeping all this money you don't get paid for any of it because you can't get in touch with a human being to talk to them about what happened i think like the biggest thing that needs to happen is some sort of push from probably the some sort of writing group against amazon to change the ku terms and make it so that anything illegally uploaded on a pirate website does not harm your book's income on ku that for me is honestly the biggest issue that I'm noticing because there have been I've seen so many stories about authors who lost all of their income stopped writing because all of their books on KU you know one got uploaded illegally and then next thing you know their KDP account is stuck and they can't do anything and they literally can't talk to anyone about it and that's bullshit so again I think the Z library conversation I think a big focal point we should take away is how can we help authors avoid the whole thing with Amazon like what can we do to change this policy so that they also are able to make the money they're supposed to make on a book when you read it because yeah it's not okay like it's really really not okay y'all so that's my takeaway for Z library just so you know um yeah that that's the part of the conversation for me that I was like that's something we can change very easily I don't think it's possible to remove pirating from the internet at this point um or make it non-existent like I think the issue has to be policy changes for authors on websites like Amazon 
no i would i would love if if an author watching this has resources or ideas of how we as readers can help them get amazon to change the policy let me know i would love to be able to broadcast that to the world because yeah i just think it's a really important thing that needs to change so there's that here on my channel we support workers rights we support unions so harper collins is currently on strike they're the only publishing house that has a union apparently which is really surprising because i mean it isn't it isn't but the way that publishing takes advantage of people and it, there's so many issues anyways it's really serious and i think we should pay attention so i will put the tiktok here for you of one of the people that is in the union and is currently striking so you can learn about it and then i'm going to talk about some things afterwards Hi, my name is Jamie Rue. I'm an editorial assistant at HarperCollins. I'm part of the union and we're going on strike starting tomorrow, November 10th. We're going to be on strike until the company agrees to a fair contract. Of the things we're asking for, the most important things are diversity initiatives, union protections, and livable wages. Here's how you can help. First, please don't cross the picket line. In fact, if you're in New York, consider joining us. We're going to be outside of the HarperCollins offices in New York City at 195 Broadway. Additionally, you can consider donating to our strike fund, link in my bio. You can consider emailing peopleteam at harpercollins.com with your support. And you can consider boosting our message on social media. Authors and agents were asking for no new contracts without our contract. Please consider holding new submissions to HarperCollins editors until our strike is over. This does not include existing contractual obligations. Freelancers, please also reconsider taking any HarperCollins contracts at this time. Again, this does not apply to existing contractual obligations. Reviewers and blurbers, please hold your reviews until our strike is over. Bookstores and booksellers, we are not asking for a boycott at this time. Instead, please hand out our bookmarks in your stores and share our graphics on social media. Publishing hopefuls and other publishing professionals, please refrain from taking any temporary work at HarperCollins during this time. They are going to try to replace us. Please do not make it easy for them. Please help us improve our working conditions at HarperCollins and perhaps in publishing as a whole. Obviously the things they're asking for are pretty chill. I'll have links down below to the resources from them, their Twitter, Instagram, all of the things. So, right, they want livable wages, Di more diversity uh, inclusion initiatives and they want union protections those are the top items and you may be like what am I supposed to do as a reader here like where am I what am I supposed to do so I just want to talk about that a little bit here for you so that you're aware for readers basically you can share what's going on share the socials um, share the store to your stories or that if you you know don't want to buy books from Harper Collins, you could also do that. Uh, I would just, and also keep an eye on it to see what they ask, because currently they're not asking us to not buy books, okay? So, like, that is something to take note of. They are not saying, like, don't buy the books, but I also think sending an email can be really uh, helpful to the email they give, so you could send something about how you support the union and you really hope they can come to terms with them, like, come to a deal, and blah, 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 and, you know, that you really like X, Y, and Z books by them. You do something like that, you know? That can always be helpful. As a bookish content creator, I think one of the questions is what am I supposed to do? Like, how do I do this? Uh, step one, in my opinion, is no content with them. So I will not make TikToks wrecking a book I'm really excited about and have really loved. I'm not going to be talking about it on my channel when I have, like, uh, one of the books that I finished this month by them. Uh, because I finished it right after the strike. So it's just not going to get a full-blown review yet and when the strike's over i will post the review i will make the tiktoks or post the tiktoks if i've already filmed them that's the biggest thing and i'm making sure i'm sharing about the strike obviously here with y'all as well i think one thing to note also is harper collins has over like 120 imprints so if you're coming here as a romance reader i wanted to share what imprints this impacts and who i personally will not be reading until the strike is over and or at least talking about um, I'm not going to post it on socials. Like, it's not going anywhere. So, pretty much I won't be reading them because if I can't track it on Goodreads, I'm going to forget I read it. Um, so, that is, for us romance readers, Avon, all the Harlequin imprints, and that also includes Karina Press. I don't know if everyone realizes Karina is a Harlequin imprint, but yeah, so that also includes Karina Press. So, yeah, it is... It sucks. Like, it sucks. Like, literally next week, one of my most anticipated reads of the year comes out, and I can't talk about it currently. So, that's fun. I also am holding all reviews. Like, any review copies I have from them, I'm not reviewing until the strike is over. So, that's a thing I'm doing. Like, 
you know, it's really small, simple things. I think if you're able to, as a reviewer, to just hold on any and all reviews for all Harper Collins titles, it's a good option. And it is exactly what I will be doing here on my channel because I do support their strike um, and the initiatives they're trying to do with their union. That is everything for Romance Lady of Monthly. Wow, it was a lot, but not a lot. It was a very weird month. So let me know in the comments if you think I missed anything important. Uh, and if you don't wanna do that, you can leave me a rain emoji because it's pouring outside today. And all I wanted to do was lay under covers and read. But I'm here filming this instead. So yeah, if you wanna do that, do that. And there'll be links to anything and everything I can link to in that description box for you, as well as links to be my friend anywhere on the internet. And I will talk to y'all in just a few days. Bye. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away, this is what